So after all of that work, we should have what is the known as the WordPress dashboard. This is our main screen where we're going to do all of our work to create our site, to add products, to change the look and feel of our site, and so forth. Now obviously we're doing it this way and I make it look so easy, but let's say you, you go home and then you close the window like, what did I do? How do I get back? So let's do this. You might have logged into your dashboard like this, that's fine. Close your window completely. Just close everything and go to the desktop. We were logged in, and now we close the window, we've logged out. Well, how do we get back? So, at the bottom here, open up a different web browser. We were using the Opera web browser, you may or, not, may, or may not have noticed, but open any other web browser. How many of you like Firefox? Raise your hand. Right. How many of you like Chrome? Raise your hand. How many of you like Internet Explorer? You, you could admit it. <laughs> I like the new one, yes. Internet Explorer 11 is good. But anyway, open a different web browser than the one you were on a moment ago. I'm going to open Firefox, let's say. And I want to get back to... I want to get back to my site. <coughs> so this is good practice. We're going to type HTTP colon slash slash localhost slash. So we're always going to start the address with localhost. We currently have one WordPress site. It's called WordPress. If we had created a site called My Bakery, then we would type My Bakery. But we created a site called WordPress, so we'll type WordPress. Press enter. So we're going to be using the shorthand I'm going to talk about. Let's go back to localhost. Well, that means type HTTP colon slash slash localhost. If I say let's go to your site, well, you should be understanding that your site is your WordPress site on localhost. And I see here my home page. It's kind of boring. It doesn't have any interesting graphics or colors, but this is my WordPress home page. But I want to get back to the dashboard. The dashboard is where I can add the products and add the contact information and all of that. So I believe I have it in the notes here, but make a note here. This takes us to the front page, what the regular user sees, what the customer sees. You want to log into your dashboard, so you want to type in your address here, and then at the end slash WP dash admin. So on localhost, which is WAMP, you've got your WordPress site. And now we're accessing the WP admin screen. Press enter there, and that should look familiar. There's your login screen. So again, log in with the username and password that I've got on my sheet, or if you made yours up, make sure you put in the username and password you, you made up. Now be careful here. Be careful here because in my sheet, I had a part here that said, I had a part that said, your username is root and your password is blank. That is only relevant when we were installing WordPress, when it needed to know the name, the login information for your database. We're no longer needing to work with the database. We're logging into WordPress. So it's this part, it's part, it's the next part over here. It's the admin and password. So I'm going to log in with my admin and password, password. And if that worked, it took me to dashboard. <coughs> oh. 
Oh, I do have it here on my notes. So number four, we can view the site as a regular user just by going to that address and we can get to the login screen by appending at the end wp-admin. So we're going to acclimate ourselves a little bit to this screen. This is the dashboard. This is where I create content, add prices, this is where I see my sales, all of that. This is known one name for this also is the is the back end. This is the back end of the of the site. It's only what you see as an administrator. The front end is what the customer sees. They're not going to see the the tools and the settings. They're just going to see the products and the contact page and so forth. So we want to switch between the back end and the front end, like the user. So we're going to get used to if you hover your mouse over your the name of your site on the top left it says visit site I'm in the dashboard I'm in the back end hover over the name of your site whatever you called yours and click visit site notice the address at the top it went over to just localhost slash wordpress and here's the front end this is what the customer sees at the very top we have a, a bar with a few options and at the very top right it says howdy admin it shows that I'm logged in obviously if this is a regular user that does not have an account they will not see that I want to switch back to the dashboard switch back to the back end so if you hover over the name of your site dashboard visit site dashboard. Switching back and forth between the front end and the back end. That should become second nature to you now that you know it. Because the front end obviously looks different than the back end. The back end are your settings and everything. So did that work for everyone? We have a variety of screens here. We will be covering most of them. One, uh, one thing to show early on, especially if you're a beginner to WordPress, is the, um, the themes. Um, notice, uh, as, I, as we saw here, our site currently looks very basic, just gray and white. The great thing about WordPress is because it's a modern type of web site creation software, you can change the look, the, the colors, the style of your site literally with one click. You can get a completely new background and new colors and a slideshow and just a brand new design. And that works because of the database. We don't really have to access it. It's all working behind the scenes. There's, a, there's an item in the database that says theme equals 2014. And so our theme, our site looks like a certain way. We click a button and then the database changes to theme equals new theme. And the site just changes. And what stays, what stays the same are any blog posts, any products, and uh, the about page, all of that. The content doesn't change it'll still have this hello world message it'll still have this uh, this um, uncategorized category it's just that the design will change so we'll try that make sure you're in the dashboard hover over appearance and select themes So go to themes inside of appearance. And here we have three built-in themes. The 2015 theme, which looks pretty boring. The 2014 theme, which looks a little less boring. And the 2013, which I think looks kind of interesting. So um, as you hover, 
over these built-in themes. It says theme details. Click on the theme details for 2013. So just hover your mouse over the thumbnail and select theme details. Here's a preview of it. I want to select at the bottom activate. So now it says here that the active theme is 2013 and 2015 was deactivated. Well, I want to see how it actually looks. This thumbnail isn't enough. I want to see how it looks like. So how do I see how the site actually looks like again? You hover over the name of your site and you visit site. Visit site. The name of my, of my site is still there, Victor's Bakery. Hello World is still there. Uncategorized is still there. I see other things like the archives, but the design completely changed. This has a brand new header graphic and the footer is in columns and so forth. The content didn't change, just the design, the style, the theme changed. I have here sample page. I have a navigation bar here. Sample page. Did you notice you had a navigation bar on the other theme? Probably not. It was up on the top right corner. But if I click on sample page, this is my sample page. And if I click on the name of my site here, it goes back to the home screen. So I changed the theme, again, with just the click of a button. The content didn't. Now you try. Change to the other theme. We had uh, we activated 2013. We started with 2015. Now you try. Switch over to 2014 and see how see what it looks like. So switch themes. So I'm going to go back to, you might have already done it, but I'm going to go back to dashboard. I'm going to go back to appearance, themes. I want to activate 2014. So actually, if you hover over it, you get activate. Activate. And now 2014 is active, and if I go back to visit site, different theme. Hello world. Notice here, you might not have noticed it, this is our menu. It's at the very top. There's sample page. It's got this little search box. So this is the power of WordPress. It's a modern type of web design software called uh, CMS, Content Management System. You don't really need to know that, CMS. It just means you can manage your content with this system. Your content are your products, your contact page, your pictures, your slideshows, your music. That's your content. And with WordPress, we can manage it pretty easily. The content, in a sense, is also the design, the, the theme of your site. And we saw that we can easily go back. Notice there's also a shortcut here, if you haven't seen it yet. You can go to the menu, Themes. And then you can easily switch over. to another theme, back to 2015 maybe, and I've got my, um, my 2015 theme. I notice that on this particular theme, I don't see the menu anywhere, I don't see the sample page. Well, every theme might be a little different. Your content is still intact, but then the design changes. 
we're not limited to just those three themes. We've got a million themes to choose from. Uh, let's look at that. Let's look at selecting a completely different theme that is not built in. I'm going to select back to the dashboard, back to themes, and this time at the top I've got add new. I'm going to add a new theme that doesn't exist, that is not installed. So if you click Add New under the Themes menu, this should connect to the WordPress repository where it shows you a variety of themes that you can access. This one is called Air Balloon Light, Trailing Spaces, BizKit, Let's say I like Air Balloon Light. If you don't see Air Balloon, that's fine, but I found a different theme. I have the option then to install it. So I'll click Install. When you click Install, it connects to the WordPress site, it installs it, and then you have to activate it. Don't forget that part. You can install as many WordPress themes as you want, but only one is active at a time. So don't forget to select Activate. And now it tells me that Air Balloon Light is active. And if I visit site, I have a brand new theme. Doesn't look exactly like my thumbnail, but it's a different design now. Unfortunately, that's always an issue. So the question is, how do we get it to look exactly like the demo? They always make it look the best. And then in order for your site to look exactly like their demo, oftentimes we have to read the documentation that explains use this option, use this feature, do this thing. So we, we have like the raw resources of the theme, but to make it look exactly like the demo, oftentimes we, we have to kind of uh, um, you know tweak it to look exactly like the demo. And as we go on we'll talk about, well look at this screen maybe, look at that option maybe, to get it as close to the demo as possible. So uh, we tried a different theme. Let me give you like one minute, one or two minutes. Now you try. Explore a different theme. Um, go back to that screen of, of new themes and maybe explore that screen a moment. Maybe search. You've got a search option there. So try to activate a different theme than the one you just did. So take a moment to do that. We'll go on in about one minute. So just get a little practice with switching a theme. If you need any help, call me. You're in the right spot there. You have the right time. Mm -hmm. So 
doesn't look like there's any other plants in the Now, when you when you browse the uh, the theme directory, <coughs> when you go to add new, notice we're in the featured section. We also have a popular section. We have the latest themes. We can uh, look for features such as show me ones that are black, that are one column, so in this case I've got 391 to choose from. Let's say you find the perfect one, like SKT IT consult, Consultant. Let's say I like it and I install it and activate it. Well, if I could do that, probably also a hundred other people did that, or a thousand. So my theme now might look like a hundred others. My site might look like a hundred other people's sites. And now I'm not unique anymore. So we are able to edit our theme, to customize it so that it doesn't look like everyone else's. But basically, there are three levels of working with WordPress themes. In, in the world of like uh, freelance web designing, let's, let's say my company is hired by a client to make them a WordPress site, we would say there's three options. There's option one, which is finding a nice theme like we just did, searching, finding the theme. And then we have the option to customize it. Notice we've got the customize option. And depending how, how the theme author set this up, we might be able to customize our theme a lot. We might be able to put our own background image, our own link colors, this says home page boxes and footer. So the author of this theme allowed us enough of this customization. This is what I would say is option one or level one. You find a theme and then you customize it within the boundaries of what the theme author has provided you. But that might not be enough customization. You might need more. You might need to, you might need to divide up the screen into four columns instead of three. And there's no option here for more columns. You might need to change that icon right there, and there's no button here to change icons. That would then take us to level two, or option two, which is to edit the code of the site. Um, you can get a glimpse of this, but this is like, this is like um, popping the hood of your car. How many of you are comfortable popping the hood of your car and getting to work in there? Raise your hand. Not, not too many. <laughs> Not too many people, but some, some are pros. So most of us are not. You're going to take it to the mechanic. So the second level that I'm going to show you, some of you might have the knowledge and the experience to be able to edit this. Uh, if we go back to Dashboard, you go to Appearance, Editor, the very last option. That will pull back the curtain of WordPress and show you all the code 
that your site is made out of. How many of you have experience with HTML? Raise your hand. Here's the HTML. How many of you have experience with CSS? Here's the CSS. How many of you have experience in JavaScript? Here's the JavaScript. Any experience in PHP? Here's the PHP. Those four languages that I mentioned, I didn't mention them randomly, those are the four languages that WordPress is made out of. So we are managing this nice pretty interface and clicking a button and choosing an option, but behind the scenes it's code. And if you know this code, you will be able to do things that the theme author never put forth to you because they didn't expect perhaps that you needed a particular feature. But if you know how to edit some CSS code, JavaScript code, HTML code, or PHP code, you will be able to make your theme do things that it wasn't originally intended to do, like six columns here. And this is level two of WordPress theme uh, management. So a lot of you will look at this screen and say, that's j gibberish. That's a, that's a wall of, I don't understand this. And it's true, it's a programming language in a sense, technically a, a markup language. Um, and so this is the raw code. I can kind of see something here. Font size 38. Something is 38 pixels big, and something is 14 pixels big. So if there's no option anywhere here in the customize feature, I can perhaps go in here and read the code and change that to say font size 12, and change something that wasn't intended. But that again is like popping the hood of your car and changing your own oil. It's doable, but if you're not experienced with it, maybe take it to a pro. That's the second level. The third level is design a WordPress theme from scratch. Write all the code yourself. Again, some of you raise your hand that you had experience, but you're going to need to have the experience of HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and perhaps a little PHP to really design your own WordPress theme completely. So when we talk to clients, we tell them those are the three options. And guess what? Each option is more expensive than the other. So we tell the client, okay, we can you know, sit with us, we'll browse themes, you pick your perfect theme, and then we'll use that theme and customize it a bit. If you really need more customization, no problem. We can write the code, a little more expensive. If that's not going to work for them, we can create a site for them completely from scratch. But we tell them, we're honest, and we tell them, the third option is the most expensive and time-consuming. You're better off using the, the money that you're going to pay us for other things instead of creating your theme from scratch. So we tell the client, even though it would be most lucrative to us, we tell the client, choose either option one or two. And most clients choose two. We start with a, a theme, and then we customize it as much as they need. That's what this, th that's what this Texcoco site is. It started off as a as a theme that anyone could get, and then we customized it with our own background color and texture and design and photos and columns and all of that. It's like taking a it's like taking a fixer up house. You want the uh, you know the structure and foundation and such, and then you're going to fix it up. That's level two, and that's what we often do with clients. The second option. Question. Uh, it really ranges, but uh, a very quick shorthand is oftentimes for uh, professional web designers that have been that have had experience. Usually, the work is a hundred dollars an hour. So, if we set a budget, okay, we've got a budget of five hundred dollars. We can spend five hours working on customizing your theme. So that's a good rule of thumb. Depending on the experience of the web design company, they might do twenty-five dollars an hour. So then. You know, you, you can work with someone like that. It just really, really ranges. And then uh, some more advanced ones, they could be charging you $250 an hour. Usually that's going to be for the ones that really need a lot of customization, like your own, your own um, proprietary shopping cart. We're going to use basically an off-the-shelf shop, off shopping cart solution. And to write your own, to create your own, that's going to be in the $200 an hour range just to create it. Why would you need a customized cart shopping cart like that? Everybody 
most fall under the just a regular standard? Most would, but some are going to need a little bit more features than what the sh off the shelf requires. That's why that's when then you're going to need customization. Yes. It would. I don't teach that. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what the instructor teaches, but those classes, to my knowledge, really have you delved into a lot of this stuff so that this doesn't look alien. Then you can couple what you learn in that class with this class because sometimes you need to pull back the curtain. You don't find a button that does what you want, but you know the code, so just edit the code. So it is useful, but that I know that class is a big time endeavor, but it definitely is useful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So those are, the, those are the three levels, the three options. Use a theme and customize it to the parameters of the author, level one. Level two, start with a theme, but then go in and edit the code. There's a spot right here. If I want my 404 error page to look a certain way, I can go to that here. I kind of can read this code and change it that instead of it saying, um, looks like you have taken a wrong turn, don't worry, it happens to the best of us. I can make that say, Danger Will Robinson. I can make it say something else because I can edit the code. The theme author never let us do that, but I know the code so I can edit it. And you're able to because the whole nature of WordPress and the themes and the software and so forth is open source, which means you are able to edit the code, the source, to your own specifications. Then the third level is, well, I took a, I took a Dreamweaver class, I'll make my own theme. Yes, so make sure you know HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and some PHP, and then you can write your own themes, no problem. So this client, as I said, we took a theme off the shelf and customized it highly. Uh, and you can get free themes or premium themes, which are not free. And those theme prices range from $5 to $500 just to buy the, the design of your theme. I'll mention a couple of sites where you can go. Because obviously you can do a search and say the best daycare website WordPress themes. And you'll get a million results, literally, of companies that are going to sell you or give you or give away a theme that might fit your purposes. And perhaps they will have enough customization features to really make your site unique. Because if you can buy it, someone else can buy it. And that's one way. Browsing the web and searching keywords and finding, for example, here 14, 14 plus best WordPress preschool and daycare, theme, daycare themes. Read the fine print of the theme, but most of them are one-time fee. Some you might need to pay annually, but when you buy it, it'll tell you the terms. So a couple of places that I recommend for good premium themes, which means p themes that you pay for, and it's not cheating and it's not bad to pay $30 to buy a theme if you customize it to look like your, you know, your branding. But one of the places I like is called elegantthemes.com. You pay here yearly subscription to access to, I think, like a hundred themes. Very well designed, very functional, with tech support. Because this is the thing about WordPress. The software is free. The, the, the plugins and features, like the shopping cart, are often free. The themes, you can get them for free. But then how, how do you make it work? How do you make this slideshow function? How do you make this sidebar work how I want? Well, you often have to read the manual, the documentation of the theme, or you ask the tech support of the theme. People make a living 
designing WordPress themes and selling them $30 a pop, then they make more money from selling you tech support. They can log into your site and fix your problems. Or they can send you an email that explains, here's the problem, you fix it. So this is how the WordPress economy works. People perhaps give away a piece that is very, very, very functional and then sell you a little extra. And a lot of you will not need the extra. Like when we talk about selling these products, even this paying customer here, we're using the totally free shopping cart plugin. We're not paying for any of the extra features, and it works perfectly. The theme we paid for, it was like a $60 theme. And then we rolled up our sleeves, edited the code, and made it do things that the original didn't. And then the client got the perfect site that they wanted. Um, what's the price on elegant themes at the moment? $69 a year. $69 a year. So that's not so bad for a year of tech support. New themes uploaded. Well, there's three levels. Complete access to all themes, perpetual theme updates, premium tech support. It doesn't come with some plugins or the original Photoshop files. There is a yearly fee and, and so forth if you go up to higher levels. So Elegant Themes is a site I like to get premium themes. Another one that I like is themeforest.com .net Fire, uh, themeforest.net this one is not on us this one is not on a subscription basis this is basically a marketplace where a variety of worldwide developers upload their theme and they they've all kind of got their own little shop selling themes and plugins and so forth and then you buy them individually as theme forest is sort of the middleman of that so if i kind of browse around a little bit For example, I could search here, um, restaurant WordPress theme. And I have Elixir, $43, five-star rating. I like uh, Theme Forest because people comment and rate on it and tell you, stay away from this developer. They never answer their emails. Mm -hmm. Or this one's a good theme because it's very robust. And so I'm seeing, for example, Elixir has perfect five stars out of eight ratings. This one here, Rosa, has five stars out of 360 ratings. This one has four and a half out of 209. But then it's also saying this has been bought 4,000 times. And this one's been bought 3,000 times. This one, 176. So Rosa. If you look at it, you'll get a preview. I like that. I like the big graphic. I like the thumbnails, etc. I like it. So I'll click Add to Cart. I'll buy it. And it'll give you all the instructions to install it. Um, it's not, you don't, you don't quite do it from, the, from inside of WordPress here because this is going to tap into the free themes. If you want these premium themes, you'll have to go a little bit outside of the system but the instructions will be listed there how to install it. It's not complicated because it's got a button that says upload my theme. If you purchase a theme from one of those sites, can you then alter it? Yes. You don't have to stay with it? Or yes. Uh, although I do say always check also the, the license. It'll tell you uh, what your limitations are. Some might say uh, do not edit. Most of them let you edit it without a problem. Oftentimes the limitation is that you will have a non-exclusive license, meaning that you bought it and so did 400 other people. If you buy one of these other licenses, like an extended license, well, it's a little bit more. So that other people don't buy it either. And uh, you look at the license and it'll tell you what's permitted and what's not, and usually they are, you're able to, to, to edit it as much as you want. Um, 
So that's what we've done for clients. We we sit down with the we sit down with the boss, and then we tell her, okay, here's one of the sites we recommend. Let's browse. Let's look at some keywords. Let's look, let's look at some designs. Which do you like? We choose one or two that we like. Then we we go to the theme and kind of read about it. What does it feature? What does it have? Oh, it doesn't have this option. Let's keep browsing. Eventually, we like the theme. We we buy it, install it, and then we go to the editor and start editing it. And the result of that is that the, the client gets their customized site and it's middle of the road expense and the client likes what they what they get. Yes, this first one, elegant themes. You're buying basically. You are you're you're buying subscription from the Elegant Themes Design Studio, and you're getting access to all their themes and their tech support. So you only pay once. Uh, Theme Forest is is a marketplace where many little developers can go here. For example, this one is. What company is this? It lists it somewhere. This particular company um, is selling this theme. They may sell other themes. Oh, here we go. Pixel Grade. Pixel, yeah, Pixel Grade. So I'm buying a theme from that one design, that one designer. And it's kind of a la carte. I buy a theme as I want it instead of paying a yearly subscription like with Elegant Themes. And as I see here, for example, there's all of these badges. Pixel Grade has the Power Elite author has sold more than one million dollars worth on the marketplace. They have um, they sell their items exclusively here. They've been in this community for over three years. They're not just they're not you know no offense, but they're not just some student right out of college trying to trying to sell. Uh, their themes, the, they have a, a cachet of ability and um, good ratings and so forth. So it, I like Theme Forest for that reason. You can find a variety of, of themes for a variety of prices. Yes? I bought my thing through WordPress, mm -hmm. but it was done by a different vendor. Mm -hmm. So do they cut a deal with WordPress or do they post to WordPress like these sites? Similar to this WordPress. WordPress themselves is acting in a way like Theme Forest. Okay. They are being the the bazaar for people to sell their wares there. So they must have so some agreement. Really no different than these. Okay. The, the That's right. Ones. Yes. But this just has more variety. Mm -hmm. So That's the big power of WordPress. Once we start adding our products, we can easily change a design, and our content stays intact. And there's many levels of customization depending on your ability and your needs. So that's one of the many screens that we will look at in the WordPress dashboard. Any questions about themes before we move on? Yes? If you buy a theme, when you get it over to you? There's going to be an option when you are in your themes screen here, add new, there's an option to upload it. So from Theme Forest, you buy it and then it'll say download your theme. You'll get a zip file and then you'll go back to your theme here, your, your dashboard, and then you say upload theme and you upload it and install it and then activate it. Now, we have, I chose a theme, I haven't changed any of the content really, it still says hello world and so forth. Let's take a moment to um, add a little content 
and then we'll get to the end of the day. But if you are not in the dashboard, let's go back to the dashboard. Back to the dashboard. And we need to talk about a very important concept, posts and pages. Posts and pages. WordPress, collectively, it calls it articles. Um, the difference between posts and pages are posts are best if you've got a site that is a blog and pages are best for a site that is not a blog. So let's back up. What's a blog and what's not a blog? I'm going to show you three examples. My personal site totally unrelated to any work. It's just my personal site about my hobby. I collect comic books. I have a site about that. So I've got my site and I've got a blog. It's a WordPress site. It's using the 2013 theme. And it's a blog because a traditional blog has a home screen, a home page, and the latest article, the latest post is first, notice the date, and then the previous post is below it, and then the previous is below that, and then you might have next page or older posts. So I go back to another page and I've got that post, another post, etc. So this is a classic blog in that you post something and it shows up on the home screen and it pushes the old stuff down. That's a blog. New content shows up on the home screen. With WordPress, we can also do a static site. So let me show you this other client. Another hard name to say in another restaurant that's going to make you hungry. But this is Italianissimo Trattoria. Italianissimo Trat. The name was long enough, so they cut it there. But this is another site made in WordPress. This one does not have a blog. It has a home page. It has an about page. Um, a gallery of the restaurant photos and so forth. And it's also made in WordPress. It has a slideshow here with food and such to entice you. And then it's got a phone number and hours and so forth and Yelp reviews and everything. But this is also a WordPress theme and this is what you would call more of a static homepage, a static WordPress site. So WordPress can be used to, to create a traditional blog kind of site or a static site. Or it can create something in the middle, which is the Texcoco site. It has static content, but notice it also has a blog right here. The latest blog posts are showing up here in this little sidebar. So WordPress can make all three of those types of sites. We'll talk about how to set that up. Uh, we're running out a little bit of time but we'll talk about this because the default WordPress is the classic blog and maybe you want a site that is more like Italianissimo you want a home page with some content some menu items no blog or maybe you want a site that's a hybrid which has both and I got off on that concept because We've got posts and we've got pages. So the posts, if we add a new post, it's going to add it to the home page and push down the older content. You add another post tomorrow and it'll push down yesterday's things. And that's for the classic blog. If I want to add an about page, a products page, contact page, it's a page.
So to get that practice, let's let's add a new post. Here in the dashboard, if you hover over posts, it'll say add new. Let's add a new post. Under add new post, we have a kind of a word processor where we can write something and a bunch of buttons and options which we'll get to but I want to write on top here enter the title of your post let's write what I learned today And then in this edit box, you can click there, write today, I learned, and write a couple of things that you learned. Notice we have some editing options. What if I want to write bullet points? There's bullet points. What if I want to write, what if I want to add bold? I've got bold. I want to put that in the center. I can align center. It's a word processor. It's like Microsoft Word or or um, Pages on the Mac. It's a basic word processor. Maybe a little too basic. What about if I want to change the color of my text and so forth? Well, we have some options here. Notice the very last button on that um, toolbar. That very last button is the toggle toolbar. Toolbar toggle. If you click that, we have a few more editing options, such as text color. We can change the size of our text a little bit. Instead of paragraph, we can say heading 1. It's nice and big. Heading 3. It's a little smaller. So not as many editing options like Word. We can add pictures and such. We'll look at that later as in Add Media. I can add a picture. I can add a video. I can add products. We'll get to that later. We can add links. Links to other websites, for example. So this is a blog. This is something that I'm going to write on a regular basis, maybe once a month, once a quarter, once a week, once a day, whatever your blog, um, whatever, whatever your goal for your blog is. Well, maybe I don't want a blog. That's when, we, that's when we'll talk about pages. But this is different from software like like Dreamweaver or Front Page and so forth because this blog that I'm writing here, it's not being saved on my computer. It's not being saved on my flash drive. It's being saved right on the site. So imagine I had victor.com. I would log into victor.com, into the dashboard, and I would write my blog post and it would be saved automatically on my site not on my flash drive. So WordPress is, that's why it needed to be installed in a server. We've installed it onto the WAMP vir virtual server, connected it to the database, and this post that I'm writing here is going to be saved to that database. As soon as I click publish on the top right, then it'll be live. My visitors could see it. But remember, we're just running localhost. We're on WAMP server. We're not live out on the real internet. So just write something if you want here and then click publish and then visit site. On the top right you should see publish. After you publish it and make any changes, then you can update. 
And if I visit site, depending on your theme, now I've got here, latest blog, what I learned today. It pushed down the old Hello World post. We won't do it just yet. You can practice it, but we'll do it next time. I have a home page. I have a sample page. Maybe I want to create an about page. That's going to be a page, not a post. But again, we'll we'll save that for next time. There's still a lot that we that we want to cover here in our basic WordPress class. We want to get acclimated. We want to get comfortable using the dashboard, adding content, having a good foundation. And then in part two, well, we should have some experience in WordPress. Part two, then, we'll focus on, let's make an e-commerce site. Let's sell products. Let's deal with shipping and handling and tax. That's why we don't touch that on the first month. There's a lot to learn before we get to that. And maybe you already know a lot of that. So maybe you can decide, do you want to come back for three more weeks of basic stuff? I welcome you. Or maybe you want to uh, wait for next month, where we definitely start with more with at an intermediate level. So, yes? Do you know when the next time part two will be offered? The next which one? The next one, uh, part two. Most likely it'll also be a Monday next month. Most the likely the no, sixth. I, I know that. I mean, like, like, for example, I won't be able to attend, so I want to know mm -hmm. when's the next time. Oh, the one after yeah. that. Um, The uh, then we might be a little too early for the fall, but it will be offered again probably in uh, in August. Okay. Um, yes. Um. Officially, I do have to have people in person to give the ad code. Um, so if, we send, if you send me an email, we'll further discuss it. But officially, you need to be here to get the ad code. Yeah, that'll work. Um, so we're going to wrap up the main lecture in just a moment. I have to address then. We did all of this hard work. When we come back next time, It'll be gone. But that's okay, because we're going to get practice to do those, those first steps again. The next time, though, we're going to create our site and so forth, and then we're going to save it. We're going to archive it so that we can take it with us. We're not going to have time to do it today. That's okay. Practice makes perfect. We're going to do it again next time. We're going to create the database. We're going to run WAMP. We're going to create the database. We're going to install WordPress, blah, blah, blah. Then at the end of the day, we're going to use a plugin to save our project as a, as a zip file that we can take with us. That way, when we come back on day three and four and five and six, we don't have to start over every time. We're going we're, we're gonna to do it the hard way once and first two times, but then after that, we have shortcuts. So no, you will not be able to simply drag your folder inside of the WAMP folder to your flash drive. That won't work, because that folder you know, if we're looking at your WAMP folder inside this WW folder, our site, part of it, is in that WordPress folder, but not the database, and not other and, and not other aspects of it. So you cannot just drag this here and bring it back next time and drop it in. It won't work. We have to use something that I'll teach you a little later to archive our site. So as we wrap up the day, any final general questions? Yes? I have a question. Okay, we'll have lab time in just a moment and I can help you. Any other general questions? Yes? I noticed that you didn't update the plugin. Should we always update the plugins? I'll, that's a big answer, so we'll talk about it next time. So I would not update plugins without what I'm going to talk about. Yes. The general difference between a page and a post. I know a post is your blog. Well, yes. Why would you select a page over a post? Well, for example, you cannot use a post to create an about page. 
the about, like all of these pages up here on this menu are pages, they're not posts. So the very nature of it is that you want a page for static content. Yeah. Alright, so when we come back next time, we'll keep learning 